Howdy my totally tubular gamers, and we are back for another ranking video. Now today's ranking video is going to be on a pretty long running franchise of video games. It is going to be on the Ninja Gaiden, or Ninja Gaiden, or however you say that series. This series is easily the longest running ninja series in gaming, going back like 30 years now, getting its start all the way back on the NES, and getting a release as recent as this year. Speaking of the release that came out this year, I want to give a special thanks to Koi Tecmo for actually providing me a free code for the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. So I want to give a big shout out to my man Master and again Koi Tecmo for providing me with this awesome collection. It has Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 and 2 and 3 Razor's Edge. They send it to me for free. I promise that's it's not totally going to affect my opinion on this ranking video, but hey, they're all pretty cool games, so thanks to them. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to limit each game to one entry on this list. A number of these games have been re-released sometimes two or three times with different versions, and I'm just going to combine them all into one ranking entry. So for instance, Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 are not going to be different entries on this list. It's just going to be Ninja Gaiden 2. We're keeping it simple. With such a storied history, the Ninja Gaiden series is known for one thing that's very consistent throughout the entire series. No matter what game you're playing, it's really fucking hard. The Ninja Gaiden games are known for being extremely difficult, and as someone who's played all of them now, I can definitely say these are some of the hardest games ever created, and they will test every bit of patience you have. These are not for the faint of heart. These games will kick your shit in. They are very punishing and just love to destroy you at every chance they get. But some of these games are some of the best action games in the entire genre, and that's why the series is still looked very fondly on, even nowadays. Now in the future, are there going to be more Ninja Gaiden games? We can only hope so. But for the time, we're going to rank every single Ninja Gaiden game. And so with that in mind, what do I think is the worst of the Ninja Gaiden games? Well, I think the weakest in the whole series is Ninja Gaiden Shadow, released for the Game Boy. I guess the game is supposed to be a prequel to the original Ninja Gaiden games on NES, but I mean, the story really isn't that existent here, it doesn't really do anything for the series, and honestly, if you're going to play classic Ninja Gaiden, this is not the game you're going to play at all. This isn't awful, this isn't the worst Game Boy game I've played, but there really just isn't all that much to it. It's a pretty basic, standard 2D platformer for the hardware. Now when it comes to Ninja Gaiden Shadow, I don't really have all that much to say about it. It is essentially just a watered down version of the NES game, and it plays like you would expect. The level design is rather basic, it's not really all that vertical at all, and Ryu's moves are very watered down from what he could do in the NES game, like he can't even grab onto every surface. I guess the game is a prequel to the NES trilogy of Ninja Gaiden games, but the story is pretty much non-existent here. And honestly, if you're going to go back to classic Ninja Gaiden, you're not going to go back to this game. You're going to probably go back to the original NES games. Not to totally harp on this game, but it's a Game Boy game. It's what you would expect. Game's not awful. It's not the worst Game Boy game ever, but I wouldn't exactly recommend it. The next game on our list is just titled Ninja Gaiden. It was released for Master System and Game Gear. Both of these are pretty much the same game. They're very similar to each other. And just like the Game Boy game, they honestly feel like watered down versions of the NES games. They're pretty standard 2D platformers that you could expect from the late 80s, early 90s, where you play as Ryu Hayabusa just kind of killing everything that moves and going across some really tricky platforming. Yeah, the game's pretty hard. It's not NES hard, but it's pretty difficult, and it just didn't really do all that much for the game series as a whole. It really doesn't add anything all that new, except I guess there is wall running in the Master System version, which is, that's kind of cool, that's how the series would evolve eventually, but other than that, the game just isn't really as good as the other classic Ninja Gaiden games. It's probably pretty clear I haven't beaten either of these games, and I don't really plan on going back to ever playing them, because they just didn't really leave much of an impression on me at all, and that's why they're so low on this list. And with all that, I can't really recommend these either, I would say these are definitely a skip, and most people probably don't even know they exist. 
Now our next game might be a little bit more well known than the games I just talked about. It is Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. Now up until the Master Collection, this was the last Ninja Gaiden game released. And it's a shame because this game isn't very good. I remember back when the game came out, I was actually decently hyped for this game. I was probably the only one, honestly. And after playing through the whole game, I can say that this is a very mediocre, sloppy, average at best hack and slash with some really ugly graphics and a really stupid story. This is the only Ninja Gaiden game that does not star Ryu Hayabusa. Instead, it stars Yaiba, who is this like ninja that Ryu just totally obliterates at the beginning of the game and he gets resurrected as like a cyborg basically. While the story starts out decent enough and could be decently compelling, it really devolves down into just nonsense and it's not very good and Yaiba actually isn't that great of a character and Ryu Hayabusa is plain and vanilla as he is because he is a ninja after all. He's better than this and most of his games are also. This game plays much worse than all the other 3D Ninja Gaiden games. This game plays like how a hack and slash from the mid 2010s would play. It's pretty generic, it doesn't do really anything interesting with any of its gameplay systems. Very standard hack and slash combat. They try to add some elements in here like fire, poison, etc. It doesn't really add all that much. None of the weapons feel all that great. The game is pretty difficult, they've got that. Enemies love to kick your shit in, and the game is a fixed camera for some reason. Despite the game having mostly fixed camera angles, the camera is still garbage in the game and you'll frequently get attacked by enemies you don't even see coming at you because they're just not visible. The game has a very interesting art style, it's very different from all the other Ninja Gaiden games and it's not as good, it's like kind of cell shaded and honestly this game is just really ugly, like it is a very ugly game. I get that they were trying to go for this ugly, drooding, dread kind of look but it's just not good. One thing that is very good about Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z that's super slept on, super underrated is the game's soundtrack which was actually by Grant Kirkhope, yes the Grant Kirkhope, Banjo-Kazooie fame Grant Kirkhope. Super underrated soundtrack is the best part of the game by far, I still actually listen to it to this day because it's actually really good. Nowadays the game is dirt cheap and I still can't even recommend it for that. It's just not really worth playing especially now that the other Ninja Gaiden games are on modern platforms with the Master Collection like this is a big step down from all those other games and it's again just a very mediocre hack and slash. It's not awful, it's not the worst thing I've played. I'd say it's just very middling and again it's just not worth playing. Our next game is actually the original Ninja Gaiden, yes the arcade beat-em-up that has been re-released on a multitude of other systems but was originally released in arcades in the late 80s. Now the original Ninja Gaiden on arcades is actually pretty different from the NES game we all came to know and love or hate. And it's mostly actually just a beat-em-up, there's very little platforming actually involved. It's a beat-em-up that is very reminiscent of the times. The best comparison I can give this game is to Double Dragon. I think this plays pretty similarly to Double Dragon, just, you know, with a ninja, and it's a little bit more advanced than Double Dragon. And it's a pretty decent beat-em-up. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of some of these late 80s beat-em-ups, but I think that this is still a decently fun one. The game's story is really what you would expect from a game of this era, basically nothing, and it sees our ninja, or two ninjas if you're playing co-op, going through six stages around America, just beating the crap out of everyone and everything. The game is that good old beat em up difficulty where they just beat your ass down so you can put more money into it. The game got some mild enjoyment out of me, I do wish it aged a little bit better like some of the other games on this list, but it's still a decent enough little beat em up, there's no harm really with this one and I mean it started the whole series so it, that's got to count for something, right? Our next game on the list is Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword released for the DS. This is a very interesting Ninja Gaiden game. This is also easily the most gimmicky Ninja Gaiden game of them all. Now the game was released on the DS so you know the touch screen is going to be involved but it's not just that the touch screen is involved, you basically do everything with the touch screen in this game. It plays very similar to say Zelda Phantom Hourglass with its controls where you move Ryu around with the touch screen. And yeah it is pretty gimmicky but for the time I think it was actually pretty decent. It takes place between Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2, the new ones, and just sees him going after the Black Spider Ninja Clan again because these people just can't r leave Ryu alone. 
The game tries to have an interesting plotline that ultimately really doesn't do anything. I mean, most of these games don't really have a very good story, and this game is included in that. And the gameplay, sure, it's aged. It feels very weird to play. It is very gimmicky. It's probably better on an actual DS rather than an emulator where you're drawing on the screen and all that. But, I mean, it's not the worst thing. It still does work. It works pretty all right. It's just really odd to play. And don't worry, game's still really hard. That's definitely one thing it's got. But luckily the game's pretty merciful and actually ends before it gets too annoying or crazy. And it's one of the shorter 3D Ninja Gaiden games. And you know what? It could have been a hell of a lot worse. I mean, it's a fine enough DS game. It's better than Yaiba, that's for sure. And, I mean, hey, you could have some fun with it. Our next game is Ninja Gaiden 3, The Ancient Ship of Doom, released on NES. So here we have one of the original NES Ninja Gaiden games, and I'm sure certain connotations show up when you think of a game like this, and they're all probably really true. The game takes place during Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2, the NES games, and the plot is pretty simple to understand with some nice cutscenes, and the game actually looked quite good for the NES. However, this game is absolutely hard as balls. And I know what you're thinking, balls are pretty squishy most of the time. No, these are titanium fucking steel balls. Like, this game is going to kick your ass, burn your house down, and kidnap your dog. I don't know. This game is going to kick your shit in. It is not easy. This is the hardest of the NES games, and it's just so hard to a point that I can't really enjoy it all that much. I think it's still good. I think it's better than the previous games I just talked about. But when it comes to the NES trilogy, I think it's the weakest of them all. The level design is just incredibly difficult with enemies that will just knock your ass off the cliff. The placement in general is just bullshit. A lot of the platforming is super tough, super tricky. And the game is very, very stingy with lives, continues, and all of that. The game just wants you to play these levels over and over and over until you become a ninja yourself. And then you can beat these levels. This probably goes down as one of the most rage-inducing video games ever created, with good reason. But, when you're not busy getting pissed off at the game or dying, it is a pretty solid 2D platformer, especially for the NES, and it's got my respect, that's for sure. I sure as hell have never beat this game, I've never even come close to beating it, but it's got my respect. And here we have the other Ninja Gaiden 3, but this is the 3D one. Specifically, we're looking at the Razor's Edge version, which is the version on Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. Now, Ninja Gaiden 3 was really slammed when it came out for a variety of reasons, and while I think the Razor's Edge version is a little bit better than the actual game, I do think it was overhated a little bit. I mean, I think it is a pretty decent hack and slash, all things considered. While not as good as the two previous entries, the game is still ultra-violent, ultra-gory, where you chop the crap out of people and get to fight some really unique enemies that are just all over the place, with some very satisfying combat, and the game is actually decently challenging. Sadly, the game does feel watered down when compared to the other two Ninja Gaiden games that came out before it, as the combat is a lot more basic, there's less weapons, the weapons just really are very basic and at least there's more than the sword, the Razor's Edge version adds more weapons, and the enemy variety is quite lacking when compared to the original two 3D Ninja Gaiden games. You mostly just fight human enemies, which is cool and all that you get to chop the crap out of them, but the previous games had much more interesting enemies. But don't even get me started on those rocket launcher motherfuckers, I hate these dudes and they're in a ton of battles. The bosses in this game are very annoying, they take a lot to kill, and I wasn't really a fan of most of them, and that final boss is just an abomination, it is one of the worst final bosses in any game. I didn't think the story was that good for this game either, where Ryu gets infected with this like curse or disease where his arm is super bloody and red and ugly and he just kind of is paralyzed in it for certain sections of the game. The game has a few parts to it where you actually do walk slowly in third person and listen to exposition, which is obviously very prevalent in video games nowadays, ever since really The Last of Us did it. But I just don't think that it belongs in Ninja Gaiden. The game is also littered with quick time events that are kind of annoying, and it makes me really wonder, like, hey, what is so good about this game? Well, when you aren't doing any of that crap and you're just going around cutting people up and just annihilating them, it's decently fun. I had a fun time with it still. Clearly, it's a flawed game. It's not for everybody. Some people have really gone on and just shit all over this game, and other people find it alright. I'm in the camp that finds it alright. It's not 
as bad as people say it is. And I mean, if you get the Master Collection, it's included, so you might as well try that. And the Razor's Edge version really is that much better than the base vanilla version, which I don't think was all that great. I'd still say it's worth giving the game a shot, especially if you like Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2, the 3D ones anyway. Our next game on the list is Ninja Gaiden 2, the NES game. Now, Ninja Gaiden 2 on NES is very similar to the original Ninja Gaiden game on NES, however, they do add a number of different elements to it. The game is still extremely difficult and has a lot of very challenging platforming parts to it, but I still think it is a very enjoyable game and a solid sequel to the original. Ryu retains all his moves from the NES game and it's some of the most difficult platforming you'll find in any game with some of the most bullshit enemy spawns you'll find in any game, but when you aren't dying, it is a very solid 2D platformer that just sees you going around annihilating everything and you feel really awesome when you're able to get through one of these levels and either die only a few times or even not at all, and it's very satisfying with that. Graphically, for the time, it looked absolutely incredible with amazing cutscenes. The game actually has a even decently in-depth story, especially for an NES game. It was definitely one of the first games ever to have cutscenes, which is pretty incredible to think about. And even coming back to this game nowadays, I'm like, yeah, this is still a pretty decently good 2D platformer. It's going to test you all right, and parts of it aren't going to be all that enjoyable, but you really got to give credit here to Koi Tecmo, or at the time, just Tecmo, as yeah, they were pretty sick when it came to making this game. The game really has a bit of a legendary status at this point, especially amongst NES gamers, being one of the best sequels on NES to anything. But I don't think it's the best of the original Ninja Gaiden trilogy, and not the best NES Ninja Gaiden game. No, I think the best of the original trilogy of Ninja Gaiden games really is the original Ninja Gaiden on NES. This game really just kind of blew the roof off, it seems, when it came out for a variety of different reasons. The game truly is a legendary, infamous 2D platformer that sees Ryu Hayabusa going around trying to be a really awesome ninja. And this game definitely made you feel like a ninja. It is one of the most challenging video games ever made. It's still extremely difficult nowadays. However, playing it nowadays, it still holds up as it's still a great 2D platformer. The level design is absolutely superb. It is, in my opinion, the best of all the 2D Ninja Gaiden games. And it features the least amount of bullshit compared to 2 and 3. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of bullshit. The enemy spawns are just ridiculous, and these birds can go fuck right off. But, I think that it's the least bullshit of these three NES games. And going around just whipping everyone's ass, doing the sick-ass platforming, and just being a god at the game, it doesn't get much more satisfying than that. It's, it's one of the most satisfying experiences you can have in a game, especially on NES. Now, for a console that is primarily known for 2D platformers, it's very safe to say Ninja Gaiden is, at the, is near the top when it comes to 2D platformers on NES with, like, Batman and Mario 3. Okay, it's not as good as Mario 3, but it's still very good. It's very hard, but it's a really good time. The game looked incredible for the time, along with East Book 1 and 2. I'm pretty sure it was, like, the first game with cutscenes ever. And the music, it's legendary. It really is. It, it's the best of... Really like any Ninja Gaiden game along with Yaiba, I love the music of the original. Despite how rage inducing it is, the game is very good and it is a classic for a reason and I can recommend it. I can't say though that you're going to beat it or even get halfway through it, but you should at least try it. It's been re-released on several different platforms and I'm pretty sure it's on the Switch Online also. So here we have the second best Ninja Gaiden game and I think it is Ninja Gaiden 2 slash Sigma 2 which is available on the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, yes. Now, Ninja Gaiden 2 is one of the craziest, most balls-to-the-walls action games I have ever played, like, and that is really saying a lot. Like, people think Devil May Cry gets pretty crazy, but Ninja Gaiden 2 just takes it to an insane level. This game is just absolutely crazy. They really took everything from Ninja Gaiden Black and just cranked it up to 11 to make one of the most insane hack and slash experiences ever created. The game takes place after Ninja Gaiden 1 and sees Ryu really just fighting everyone and everything. Like, you just absolutely tear through demons and cultists and just crazy people in general. Like, the story is just, it makes very little sense and just sees Ryu absolutely annihilating everyone. 
The game introduced several new weapons to the series, such as the claws, and these are just awesome. And the game introduced tons of new combos and awesome new charge moves where Ryu pretty much just loses his goddamn mind, honestly. This is one of the most satisfying hack and slashes I've ever played, though. Like, I just felt so powerful. I felt so unstoppable as I completely mowed through these dudes. And the game... The game's progression has really been streamlined from Black. That non-linear experience is kind of gone, and it's really a linear hallway-based, run-straight agenda. And yeah, the game can become pretty mindless, and I gotta be honest, especially the Sigma 2 version, the game is not difficult at all, which is kind of sad for Ninja Gaiden. And despite how just amazing the combat is and crazy it is, it never once honestly challenged me. I just completely blew through the game. Of course, I did beat the previous Ninja Gaiden game, but I was able to just completely annihilate it. But damn, did I have fun with this game. Like, I really sat down and played this game for like 7 or 8 hours straight and beat it in almost one sitting because I was just having such a good time with it. I was like so unstoppable and everything was just, it was hitting all the right buttons for me where you just kill everything, super satisfying, crazy, easy to understand, hard to master, but just a great time. Does it go a bit overboard and does it go too far on the crazy side? Yeah, it does, and it can definitely be one of those games that you just kind of turn your brain off at some point and just kind of just chop through everything, and it's definitely less methodical than Black, but I mean, it was still great. I have no problem recommending the game to people who like action games, character action games, hack and slash games, whatever you want to call that, because you're just not going to find an action game as crazy as this one, and it's really never been replicated since then. They knew that they went a little too far with this one, and they toned it down for the following Ninja Gaiden games. But do I think it's the best Ninja Gaiden game? No, I don't. Ninja Gaiden, or Ninja Gaiden Black, or Ninja Gaiden Sigma. This is what I think is the best of the entire series, and this is one of the best action games ever created, without any question. This game was basically a masterpiece from the moment it came out. Like, people knew even then that this is one of the best action games ever made, and to this day, it still is. There are not many other hack and slash games that can really touch this game, in my opinion, with an amazing movement system that can see Ryu run on everything that you can think of, some incredibly in-depth combat that is not only extremely difficult, but are just as satisfying. Pulling off combos in this game feels amazing. It's not as crazy or balls to the walls as Ninja Gaiden 2, but it feels a lot better. The combat flows a lot better. It's slower for the better, and it just is a great time. The game loves to kick your shit in, but it also loves when you kick it back. When you kick the game's ass, the pacing of the game is absolutely superb. The enemy placement isn't out of control. They don't overwhelm you quickly. They really ease you into it and get you used to the game before they start totally kicking your ass. The level design is really great because most of the time it's not your super linear experience. It's a much more open area kind of non-linear, less traditional experience. It's more like the original Devil May Cry or Devil May Cry 3 and I think that this entire way that games work in terms of level and progression has been totally lost in the modern gaming landscape and I think it's really underappreciated, especially in the original Ninja Gaiden. Exploring these levels was great, getting into these combat encounters was even better. The story was actually pretty good, it makes sense for the most part and there's some pretty cool parts to it. Sure, in the Sigma version you have to play as Rachel a few times, but these are so quick that it's, it's over like that. I mean, I didn't even really think twice about it. But this game will test you. This is one of the hardest hack and slash games of them all. Like, especially towards the end, I was like, holy shit, this game is hard. And I think that it really just absolutely captured everything that was great about the 2D original NES trilogy of Ninja Gaiden and put it into a 3D setting and made it just absolutely legendary. It's rare for a series to be so amazing in 2D and to be even better in 3D, like, it's, it's incredible. I don't really have all that much left to say about Ninja Gaiden Black or Sigma or whatever because what's there to even say about it? It's just one of the best hack and slashes you'll ever play. Like, I truly think that this is an absolutely legendary game. I'm really glad I got to actually play all the way through it. Thanks to Koei Tecmo sending me the game, the Master Collection. That's awesome. Major thanks to them. 
And that's really it for this video. If you disagree with me, which you might, you can let me know in the comments. Um, if you could share this to even one person, that'd be amazing. Sub, comment, all that great stuff. I think Ryu Ayabusa has been well overdue for Smash, but that's just me. Anyway, hope everyone has a great day. Uh, hopefully there won't be too many more shark videos, and I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.